By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And it is Tuesday again, and that means that we are going to dive right back into the dark tournament. And we have reached the quarterfinals. Now, if you've missed all the other matches, no worries. There's probably a link to a playlist in the description below. So click on that link and that will take you to all the other games. For now, we are going to look at a quarterfinal. And in the quarterfinal, we find Dutchman Kundert playing with a red and white deck against um, American Skoda, who's playing with a mono green deck. But it's not completely green when you look at the sideboard. Uh, before we dive into their deck lists, and actually I should say deck photos, because I've got photos of both of these decks, I would first like to point out that, as always, you can also skip the deck tech section, and you can do that by checking the description below. There you will find a timestamp that reads MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the games. And here I'm going to continue with the deck techs. Like I said before, we're in the quarterfinals. So let's first take a look at the deck of Kunert, his red and white brew. And here we see the deck of Kunert. So it's white and it's red. And the first thing that I notice is the full play set of preachers and a full play set of witch hunters. And that kind of gives me an idea that Kunert really wants to go into mid game, late game and kind of take control via these two creatures. It's not the only thing he can do, but it's definitely a big part of his strategy. So let's first look at uh, Preacher, which is probably a card that uh, most of you will know. It's two white to cast, uh, plus one, and you get a one one summon Preacher, and then there's a lot of text on this card. So I'm just gonna make it really short. Um, you can tap it, and for as long as Preacher remains tapped, you gain control of target creature of an opponent's choice. So that's very important. So if the opponent has two creatures or three creatures on the board, the opponent can choose what creature he or she wants to give, right? So it's not like you choose what creature you want. Your opponent makes the choice. Still, it's a very strong card. Now, one of the problems with this card, of course, is that it is a 1-1, one -one, and in case of this matchup, it can get killed by the tracker, right? So that is a weak point. But if he manages to get Preacher on the board before the tracker, I think the Preacher can play a really big role in this matchup. Now, there's another card uh, that has some nice synergy with the Preacher, and that is the Witch Hunter. So Witch Hunter is two white and two to cast, so one mana extra. And it's quite of an oddball because it has a blue ability, or at least I see it as a blue ability. It is a 1-1. One -one. You can tap Witch Hunter to deal one damage to target player, but not to a creature, so only to target player, so it can ping like the Timmy. Then the second ability, and I think that second ability is actually better and more relevant for this matchup. For two white and one, you can tap it and you can return target creature and opponent controls from play to the owner's hand. And enchantments on target creature are destroyed. Now, the relevant part here is that if you've got a preacher and a witch hunter on the board, and of course enough mana, so this is going to be a really slow strategy. you got to be at turn five or, or maybe turn four if you've got some Felwer Stones to pull this off. Uh, but what you can do is you can send a creature back from your opponent that you don't want to have if your opponent has multiple creatures on the board. So first use your Witch Hunter to send target creature back of your opponent. Then you can tap your creature after that and say, okay, now the creatures that you have left, pick one and give that to me. So the worst creature you send back to his hand and then you use your creature to steal something. The cool thing is you can use both of these abilities instantly. So you can do it during, for example, the combat phase of your opponent. Your opponent's going to attack. In response, you can say, I'm going to send that creature back to your hand and I'm going to steal one of your creatures with a uh, preacher. So you, you can actually do that and, and that way kind of protect yourself from a big stampede of green creatures coming in in the case of this matchup because I believe Skoda is playing with a lot of big, green, beefy creatures. Now, of course, the problem with Preacher and Witch Hunter um, is that they are both small you know they're they're both one one creatures they're pretty expensive to cast right you need two white to cast both of them which is always kind of risky because in this format there are no dual lands there's no city of brass so mana fixing is kind of difficult yes you've got felwer stone but remember because there's no city of brass in this format or no dual lands Flower Stone is also not super useful. It, it will kind of ramp you up, maybe one colorless mana, but you cannot expect to get a red or, or a white mana, especially in this matchup where he's playing against the mage who's mainly playing with green uh, mana. So that Flower Stone will only make green and not that second white if he needs it. Another reason that this card um, is not very, uh, very powerful 
or maybe not as powerful as you would expect in a the dark tournament is the fact that it's a 1-1 so in case when you're playing against mono green it can get killed in, uh, by a tracker um, i myself played blue and red and i played with brothers of fire which was just the ideal answer to preacher and witch hunter now luckily for kundert his opponent today is playing green so has no access to um to uh two brothers of fire and and i mean looking actually looking at the red section of his deck it's quite interesting he's got four brothers of fire which i think is a really really good decision brothers of fire is a powerhouse in this format yes you need tons of mana to activate it but once you're able to do that you can make so many uh you can kill so many key creatures of your opponent and i mean tracker would be the number one target here for brothers of fire get brothers of fire on the board kill the tracker or let the tracker kill itself against brothers of fire also find trade brothers of fire for tracker and then you kind of clear the way to play your own preachers and witch hunters right because you don't have to be afraid of tracker um you know killing them before they can actually get activated right so brothers of fire i think is another card that can play a big role here also i see two infernos now inferno deals six damage to everything which is kind of nice because he's playing against a green player and green players also with the dark what they want to do is just they want to play a lot of creatures they want to create a stampede and stamp all over you which is a very good strategy uh but inferno is a way to stop it of course the problem with inferno is the casting cost two red and four it's six mana so probably by the time you can cast the inferno there is a chance that your life total is already so low that you cannot take the six damage yourself because remember inferno does six damage to everything so your own creatures yes but also your life total right um talking about another card that kind of hurts skundert here is the card eternal flame so eternal flame two red and two deals uh, damage to your opponent um, equal to the amount of mountains that you have but also half the damage to yourself rounded up so for example if you've got five mountains you can play eternal flame deal five damage to your opponent but you will have to take three damage as well so it's quite difficult when you've got all these things that are hurting yourself which is very typical for the dark by the way to then still have the space that you need to cast that inferno in late game uh, another really good play set in this deck or the four um uh, the four fishers right fisher is just very strong removal in this format two red and three again pretty costly you know uh, but it's an instance you can play it on the end step of your opponent or during the combat of your opponent and then next turn you can untap and have all your mana available again so that's pretty cool um when we're looking at the sideboard we see some anti-goblin deck tech an interesting card that he might be playing with is festival festival is beautiful art first of all but it's just such a cool card um it's an instant for one white and it reads opponent may not declare an attack this turn play during opponent's upkeep phase so this card could be interesting for kundert because it can kind of buy him time if he gets overrun just by you know your usual ramp and quickness of green you know what we're used to festival can buy him time so that he can just get that extra turn to activate a preacher or witch hunter and kind of turn the game around so festival is definitely on the list okay this is the deck of kundert white red powerhouse now let's take a look of the de at the deck of his opponent uh green inferno by skoda let's go and here we see the deck of skoda and it's called the green inferno and we probably know why because it's just full of green creatures this is really a stampede strategy right and i think green is is your traditional color that can really pull it off we they even have some um some mana acceleration going on in the form of the elves of deep shadow right one green to cast you can tap it for one black that it's going to deal one damage to you but i mean if that means that you can get for example your spitting slug out one turn early i mean spitting slug is a two four creature that you can potentially get first strike for three mana that is huge in the dark that is really a very very strong card and then we also see some other cards land leeches i mean it's a two two for three with first strike you may think okay that's not really that uh relevant but i mean land leeches is a great blocker and also attacking it can be so annoying because a lot of creatures in uh in the dark format have one toughness or two toughness it's quite hard to find three toughness creatures so that makes land leeches actually pretty strong and then we also have a card that i find quite interesting lurker and lurker is a card that cannot be targeted right so for the people that don't know it's one green and two to cast for a two three so first of all that three toughness is quite relevant because it's not that common in the dark that you get three toughness 
for three mana. That is a pretty good deal. Now, Lurker has this interesting ability. Lurker may not be the target of any spell unless Lurker was declared as an attacker or blocker this turn. So one of the mistakes that's sometimes made with Lurker is that people think as soon as Lurker becomes tapped, I can actually target it. No, it has to be an attacker or a blocker. So only during combat you can do something to the Lurker. So this means that, you know, Witch Hunter or Preacher Activation or Brothers of Fire, they cannot target the Lurker unless it is attacking or declared as a blocker, right? So, and you may think, why is this relevant? Well, we'll, we'll just have to have a look at, at the match, but I think it, it could be relevant in this matchup. And then we've got uh, a card that I really like. I love the art of this card. Uh, the uh, Sylvain card. So three green to cast for a 2-2, three green mana, right? But that doesn't matter for Skoda because he's basically playing mono green. It's a 2-2 as well. And for four mana and tap, you can regenerate target creatures. So that can actually keep the creatures alive because in uh, the dark, you will have a lot of combat situations. So you actually want to kill a creature the old fashioned way through combat. Now the Sylvain can keep those green creatures alive. Luckily, um, for Kundert, he is playing with some Fisher, so he could maybe deal with the Sylvain and then kill the, the uh, other green creatures in a traditional form. Um, but it is definitely one of those annoying cards. You're like, ah, oh, I want to block, and yeah, I'm going to give it regenerate, and I'm going to survive this combat step, you know? Uh, so that could be quite, quite annoying. And of course, there's Tracker in this deck. Tracker is just such a powerful card. Four of these. Uh, Tracker can kill creatures right that's basically what what tracker can do um it is of course a 2-2 and the downside here is you know when you're playing the dark only you don't have access to any pump effects you don't have giant growth or any other way you don't have uh white lily wolf you don't have any way to kind of pump your tracker but still it's a really good card against those one one key creatures like preacher like uh, witch hunter and also you can kill a brothers of fire with it you can just trade a brothers of fire for a tracker which is not too bad because you want to protect all your other creatures that are one toughness or two toughness, right? And then, of course, there's the bomb. And yes, it's a bomb in this format. The four Wormwood Tree Folk. So Wormwood Tree Folk, two green and three for a 4-4 four, four creature that you can actually give Forest Walk or Swamp Walk. Now, unfortunately for Skoda, his opponent is not playing with any forests or swamps. But despite that fact, it's still just a very strong creature. A 4-4 four, four body on the field, you know, in, in the dark only. That is a force to reckon with. I mean, that is powerful. And I just think when you look at this deck, they're only creatures, right? Except for uh, for the Venoms, they're only creatures. So that makes it really, 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 really difficult for any opponent to kind of survive this ongoing, you know, a creature stampede. I mean, starting at turn one, Skoda is going to just spit out creatures and he's not going to stop until his, his opponent is dead. So it's going to be really, really difficult for Kunder to kind of get out of the pressure and try to kind of more play his control game. Interesting when we look at the sideboard is the inclusion of four swamps and the, uh, the two, I believe they're called Ashes to Ashes. Um, it's two black and one to cast. Beautiful artwork by Drew Tucker. And Ashes to Ashes removes two target non-artifact creatures from the game and does five damage to you, right? So you lose five life, but you get to remove, so not just destroy, but remove two creatures from the game. So that can be quite powerful. I wonder if that's something that he's going to board in. Um, always when you're boarding things in, you have to take into account you're also boarding stuff out. And when you're boarding stuff out, it means that your, your A plan, in the case of Skoda, playing creatures and just ram, your A plan is not going to be as efficient anymore. So I wonder what he's going to do uh, after sideboarding, if he's actually going to board in the Ashes to Ashes, or if he thinks, you know what, I just want to play creatures, I want to be consistent with my, my uh, green mana, and I just want to, you know, stampede all over my opponent. I think it's I think it's a good strategy. I'm not surprised that this deck made it all the way to the quarterfinals. And actually, for me, it's a slight favorite for the simple reason that it's got no fancy tricks. It is it is what it is. What he wants to do is play tons of creatures, creatures that are a little bit bigger and a little bit better probably but than the creatures of his opponent for the casting cost and just, you know, win the game that way. I think it's a very solid plan. I think it's going to be really tough for Kunder to kind of get his control game. It's not impossible, but it's going to be tough. At least that's my prediction for this matchup. Okay, we've looked at both of the decks. I think we're ready. Let's go to the games. Game number one, and here we go. Kundert sitting on the left with his uh, red and white powerhouse playing against Skoda on the right with his mono green deck. And there's a scavenger folk turn one from Skoda 
as to be expected, early creatures and early aggressive aggression from that side of the board. And this is an interesting opening by Kundert playing that Mace of If turn one already, kind of deciding I'm just gonna save some damage here, really gonna try to drag this game into mid game, late game. There's the third forest, and three is really a key number for Skoda. He's got land leeches, he's got tracker, uh, he's got um, lurker, he's got a lot of three toughness, uh, three casting cost creatures. And here we see an attack, probably going to be the first damage of the game. That's one point of damage done by the Scavenger Folk. Kunder dropping to 19 here. I'm expecting Skoda really to play another creature. Uh, like I said, 3 is just such an important amount of mana for him to have. There we see the Lurker, a 2-3 creature. No Spitting Slug yet. There is a Brothers of Fire on the side from Kunder. He can use that next turn to kill the Scavenger Folk. And I'm just expecting an attack here. There, there they go. So probably a maze. In this case, on the lurker, taking two damage. Oh, he's actually blocking it for the brothers, deciding to trade. A probable reason for that is. Uh, oh, that is unfortunate for Kundert here. Look at that, and a people in the woods, and another tracker. I wanted to say he probably chose to trade it because he's got preachers in the deck, so he just wants to play out preachers and witch hunters without having to fear it getting killed by the tracker instantly. And there's a second Brothers of Fire for Kundert, but it's not looking great for Kundert. This is kind of the scenario that I expected. Early pressure from the green deck, just a lot, a lot of creatures. And he's just gonna attack. He's just gonna turn those creatures sideways every combat step of the way. And there's a Venom on the People of the Woods, which is quite interesting. People of the Woods has power or no toughness equal to the amount of forests. He controls and he's got one power so that people of the woods is now a one five creature with venom and venom means that every creature that blocked the people of the woods or um or that people of the woods blocks is basically dead it's kind of it's not death touch it's kind of death touch um there we see a goblins of the flock a one one goblin with mountain walk not very relevant the mountain walk but at least it's another body on the ground you know if need be it can stop some damage for kundert here and Kunert is actually doing pretty good. I mean, he's been under pressure, but he's still on 18, which is not too bad. And I think as his game is going to progress, the board is going to be gummed up more and more, and maybe Kunert can kind of stabilize here. There is the Sylvain. So Sylvain, a 2-2 for 3 green, and for, I believe, 3 green as well on tap, you can regenerate target creature. So that is, that is actually pretty good. Of course, now it still has Summoning Sickness. And it looks like he's using the ability of the Brothers of Fire, probably they're going to kill the Tracker here. In response, he's going to activate the Tracker to fight with the Brothers of Fire. And that means that Kundert gets two damage from his own brothers, but he's been able to kill the Tracker. So it's an understandable move, especially now that the Sylvain is on the board. If he waits another turn, Skoda will have access to his Sylvain and he can start using the Tracker and then regenerate the Tracker and basically changing the tracker into a killing machine, which is actually a pretty cool combo. And here we see a full out alpha strike by Skoda here, attacking with everything. And now the question is, what is he gonna block with the Goblins of the Flark? Is he gonna block anything? And yeah, he's gonna trade the Goblins of the Flark for the Scavenger Folk, it seems. And there seems to be a little discussion here. I would assume, yeah, Flark for Scavenger Folk, so they're both gonna die using the Maze to send the Lurker back. So he's gonna take three damage in total, and he's now dropped to 12 life. He's gotta find a way to stabilize here. Okay, this could help. Preacher and a Brothers of Fire. That means next turn he can start stealing a creature from Skoda here. And I mean, ooh, this could be, could have a pretty big impact. And I do believe that Skoda can actually choose the Lurker because he's choosing when Kundert activates the, um, the Preacher, but I'm not 100% certain. So now first we see a full-on attack and Kundert sending back one of the Lurkers and there's also a Spitting Slug hitting the board. Now remember, uh, if Kundert activates the Preacher, Skoda gets to choose what creature he wants to give to Kundert. So at least that's a little bit of control. And also when I'm looking at the mana, uh, Kundert can actually do a lot of damage with uh, the Brothers of Fire. And he's passing on the turn to Skoda. He untaps and then he activates the Preacher. And that's quite interesting. Uh, he's giving him the People of the Woods. People of the Woods is dead. Why? It has toughness equal to the amount of force of the controller. And as you can see, Kundert does not control any force. And now there's another full out attack. 
And it's clear what Skoda wants to do. He's like, I'm going to win this race. You're so far behind already. I'm going to win it. And there we see an activation by the Brothers of Fire. He can do that now. Why? Because the Sylvain is tapped. You need to tap it to regenerate it if you can still follow. So this is a good decision by Kunder. The only downside is he's taking damage again. He's now on five. The upside is, of course, he's playing against a deck that can only deal damage through combat. And he's using his Preacher, and I think he's using it now because he's assuming that Skoda can only give the Spitting Slug. And you can see Skoda is now reading the Lurker. He wants to find out what's going to happen. So it looks like both players are maybe going to look into that. Oh yeah, it seems that since the Lurker cannot be targeted, he has to give the Spitting Slug to Kundert. And of course he doesn't want to do that. But um, yeah. So there we see that card that represents the Spitting Slug now under control by Kundert because of the Preacher. And look at things have really changed. It looks like Kundert has managed to stabilize. The only downside is he is still pretty low. He's on 5 life. The upside though is that there's no way I believe in Skoda's deck to deal any direct damage. He has to deal the final 5 damage through combat. And that's going to be really tricky. Even more difficult cards here for Skoda to deal with a Witch Hunter. You can tap it to deal one damage, but you can also pay two white and one to send target creature back to its owner's hand. Only an opponent's creature, by the way, but I mean, that's pretty good still for Kundert, so he's really kind of stabilizing. Remember, Kundert also has that Spitting Slug from Skoda, so Skoda only has that Lurker and Spitting Slug on the board, facing a Brothers of Fire, a Witch Hunter, a Spitting Slug, and a tapped Preacher. To make matters worse, Kundert, of course, still has his Maze of If. Maze of If really being an all-star in this game for Kunert, imagine he would have been dead already without that maze. And remember, he played that first turn. Ooh, that's cool. That's the He-Man sword. Um, you can tap it to give target creature plus two plus O. Oh, um, and that creature then cannot regenerate. So if it um I, I should say it differently, it's when he blocks target creature, the creature that's being blocked that has um that has the plus two plus O oh bonus. The creature that is blocking cannot regenerate. Okay, I'm just trying to explain it here, not very <laughs> successfully. Uh, it's a cool card. It's a very, it's the art is beautiful, like the He-Man sword. And there we see, talking about beautiful art, a really nice altar of Elves of Deep Shadow being played by Skoda. And look at that, he's attacking, and then he's giving plus two plus zero to his Spitting Slug, making it now a four four. And look at that, he's dealing damage. Skoda taking some damage here for the first time, I believe, going to fifteen because of that pump with the swords, and I guess it gives plus three plus O, oh, turning it into a five four creature. That is pretty strong. And let's see, what can Skoda do here? He's so close to winning and yet so far away, right? Five is nothing, but I mean, he can only deal that damage by combat and he needs to find a way through attacking with everything playing that venom on his smallest creature i think that's a very good move the elves of deep shadow so that's definitely a card that kundr doesn't want to block on the other hand kundr can activate the witch hunter to send the elves of deep shadow back and then uh, skoda will lose the venom but he probably doesn't really care about that he just wants to deal damage kundr being on five at the moment so he cannot let everything go through Oh, he's using his Brothers of Fire, going to four, but killing the Elves of Deep Shadow. Then he's pinging back, sending back, I should say, the Lurker. And using his Mace on the Spitting Slug. So, when all the dust has cleared, Skoda has managed to deal one point of damage because of the Brothers of Fire activation. So, Kundert is on four. Untapping the Sword, not untapping the Preacher, so he still has the Spitting Slug. And he can start attacking again with the Spinning Slug, pumping it to a 5-4, just like he did in the previous turn. And that's exactly what he's going to do. Not tapping the sword yet. Yeah, using the sword here, dealing... Oh yeah, so dealing 4 damage. It is plus 2 plus 0 and not plus 3 plus 0. It is sometimes difficult because you don't see these cards often, although they're very cool. You don't see them often, so sometimes... I need to kind of really dig into my memory to see, was it plus 3 plus 0? Was it plus 2 plus 0? Oh, a Fisher on the Lurker! Wow, it really looks like Kundert is actually going to survive this. He's managed to stabilize, and there we see two more bodies hitting the board from Skoda, but his hand must be pretty empty by now. 
And I mean, the Lurker is looking good, but Kunert can do a couple of things against the Lurker. First off, he can use the Witch Hunter to send it back to Skoda's hand. A more risky play would be to use Brothers of Fire, but that would mean he would drop to two, so I don't think he's going to do that. First attack, of course, remember, he can make it 4-4 because of that sort. So this is difficult. Is he going to block or not? And if he's gonna, going to block, he's probably going to make it into a 4-4. Ooh, this is interesting. He's giving Spitting Slug first strike, blocking on a first striker. Now I'm expecting him to actually use perhaps his Witch Hunter. Oh, it looks like he's going to use his Brothers of Fire to maybe kill the Land Leeches. Ooh, it's going to go to two. He's going to kill the Land Leeches. And then, is he going to use the sword? If he uses the sword, no, he's not going to use the sword. He has to use the Witch Hunter here. I th of course, that's the best decision to send back the uh, the tracker but wow what a good block here by skoda kind of forcing kunder to use his brothers of fire he's on two this is really a problem for kunder here i mean he's stabilized oh the scavenger foe can be relevant because it can destroy the sword next turn and then the question is is kunder using his brothers of fire again meaning he would go to one to save his sword very interesting match, very close, very exciting. It looks like he is... No, 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 he's activating the sword, making it a 4-4. Attacking, look at that, he's taking the damage, 4 damage for Skoda. He's dropped to 8 now. Playing a Fisher. oh, that Fisher is so important here. I think that Fisher is gonna, gonna mean perhaps victory for Kundert. I am expecting Skoda to take care of that sword. And I don't think that, uh, no, he doesn't have enough mana to activate Witch Hunter anyway. So Witch Hunter is not really relevant at the moment. And yeah, that Maze of If is really what's, what's keeping him alive. There we see a ping from the Witch Hunter. Interestingly enough, he's not using the Scavenger Folk, perhaps wanting to keep the option open. What he can always do is when Kundert activates the sword on the Spitting Slug, he can choose to then uh, block it with the Scavenger Folk and then he can kill the the sword let's see what he's going to do attacking here and using the witch hunter to send back one of the creatures of skoda making it impossible to make a good block for him now i'm expecting a block with the scavenger folk i think that's what i would do then activate scavenger folk to destroy the sword but of course skoda knows it's not ideal Ooh, and he's actually blocking it on the spitting slug Interesting. I'm sure he has its reasons. He really doesn't want to activate the scavenger folk. I mean, this must be game, right? Oh, yeah, it's game. Okay. <laughs> wow. What a comeback by Kundert here. Congratulations, uh, Kundert, for, for winning this one. Uh, I didn't expect that halfway through the game. I really thought, okay, Skoda is doing his A plan, you know, just sending out all, uh, all of his creatures and going full force. And you were so low. But I think you stabilized around the 5 life mark and you managed to drag this win in. So game 1 goes to Kundert. Both players are going to sideboard and we'll catch back up to them in game number 2. Game number 2 here. So Kundert winning that first game. That was really a surprise to me. Well done there for stabilizing. So that means Skoda is on the play again starting with the forest. Not a 1 drop this time. Not a 2 drop this time. Okay, so this is actually good news for Kunder. That means he gets more time to kind of play his Preacher's and his control game that, that he did so well in game number 1. There we see a Spitting Slug 2-4 Powerhouse here from the dark. Tapping 4. Okay, there we see the 2-2 two, two, uh, Knights of Thorn. It's got Banding and it's got first... Oh, no, Protection from Red and Banding. That's it. So the protection from red, not too relevant. The banding can be, though, because in a lot of blocking situations, banding can really, really be powerful. And we probably see a double creature here, Elves of Deep Shadow and a Tracker by Skoda. And Kunder dropped to 18 because of that spitting slug. Again, we see that Maze of If. And maybe it's nice to know in this format, Maze of If is restricted. So Kunder is very lucky finding two early Mazes of If because I think that makes a big difference. Without the Maze of If, he would have definitely lost... Game one. Then again, you know, there are a lot of cards that, uh, you know, um, played a part in that in that particular game. There we see a Wormwood Tree Folk. Wow, that is a 4-4 for four, four, 5. Extremely strong in uh, in the dark-only format. There we see a Cold Golem to give you a nice, um, 
uh, example, like a nice um, comparison, the cold golem is 5 to cast and you only get a 3-3 three, three body. And the Wormwood 3 folk has the same amount of mana and it's a 4-4, four, four, so it's a better deal. Let's see what Skoda can do. They're already kind of facing a wall. Remember, um, Kundert now has two Knights of Thorn. They both have banding, so we can just block in a huge band. And that means that attacking seems kind of mad at the moment. Of course, he can use the Tracker to maybe trade one of the Knights, but you don't really want to do that knowing that your opponent plays with Preacher and Witch Hunter. You want to keep your Tracker alive to deal with Witch Hunter or Tracker. And maybe Kundert is kind of sitting on those cards in hand as well. But looking at his mana base, by the way, Kundert is missing his second whites. Oh, this is interesting. This is coming from the sideboard. Ashes to ashes. Skoda dealing five damage to himself, but more importantly, he's able to remove two creatures. That means the defenses are down and he can attack with the team. Two spinning slugs and a Wormwood Tree Folk in here to deal some pain. He's probably not gonna use his Knight of Thorn. Wanting to use his banner when he gets another creature on the battlefield. That means four points of damage for Kundert here. Also dropping to 14 because Skoda took some damage from his own Ashes to Ashes. Remember, that thing de deals five damage and he also had to take a point of damage by using the Elves of Deep Shadow for the second black. So this was a really good move. And look at that, Kundert unable to play out a second creature. This is problem problematic here for Kundert. Needs to find probably a second white. Even if he gets to find a second white, that tracker on the board means that Skoda can kill any witch hunter or preacher that enters the battlefield. What Kundert really needs now, I guess, is you know a creature for starters, but maybe a Brothers of Fire as well. Are we going to see a Brothers? There is a Brothers of Fire, so he. It's not I, the thing with the Brothers. It also hurts himself. At least he can now block in a band. It's going to be interesting to see what Skoda is going to do if he's going to attack, for example with his Wormwood Tree Folk. And of course, he's first going to use his Tracker to trade. That is a good move, but also this kind of opens up Kundert now to playing Preachers, but he does need a second white to do that. And there's a full out attack. He's kind of forced to block. Is he blocking one? Yeah, he's blocking one of the creatures, taking two damage then in total, losing both of his creatures this turn. Things are looking really good for Skoda. And I mean, Kundert really needs something. He needs something quick to turn this game around. And here we can see that Thower Stone is just not as useful. If his opponent would have played with the White Source, it would have been much better. Yeah, there we go. Kundert scooping up the cards. He's saying, you've got this one. And this is actually how the green deck operates. It's so aggressive, so quick. And then if you stumble, in this case, stumble on mana, you're a goner. I also think that that Ashes to Ashes that came in from the sideboard, that was definitely a power play in this game number two. That means it's one against one and that means we're gonna go into game number three game number three it is one one i always love these decisive final games this is the quarterfinals of the timmy goes the dark tournament so whoever wins this one is going to advance to the semifinals if you want to see the other matches by the way there is a link in the description below and probably also in the comment section oh look at this skoda taking a mulligan this is very good news for kundert uh, in this format, there is not a lot of card draw. I believe you've got Book of Rass. I do think Skoda is playing one of that in his sideboard. But, I mean, Book of Rass, it's not really what Skoda wants to do. Skoda wants to ramp up, play out a lot of creatures, and just deal damage as early as possible. That's that's his game plan. And the Book of Rass doesn't really fit into that game plan. I think it would fit Kundert better. On the other hand, uh, for Kundert, the problem is that he's got a lot of cards that deal damage to himself. We saw that in Game 1 and actually also in Game 2 with that Brothers of Fire. You know, Brothers of Fire is a great card, but it also deals damage to yourself. And that makes it really difficult to play out your burn spells later in the game, like um, Eternal Flame and um, what's that other card called again? Inferno, like Inferno, that deals 6 damage to everything, right? So you really have to be careful knowing when you're going to deal damage to yourself and when not. So... Let's take a look here. Skoda is going to keep the hand, putting one on the bottom. London Mulligan. Kundert's going to start with a basic mountain pass turn. No Mons Goblin Raiders for him. Basic forest Skoda passing turn. There we see a Plains. And will we see People of the Woods? No People of the Woods from Skoda. And there is a Brothers of Fire. This is actually a really good start from Kundert, simply because there's no pressure yet. Okay, there we see a Lurker. Remember, Lurker is a 2-3 creature. So it's kind of hard to deal with here for Brothers of Fire. There we see another Brothers of Fire, quite relevant, because now Kundert can double block if Skoda decides to attack. 
He does decide to attack. I am expecting a double block. This format has no giant growth or any instant pump spell to my knowledge. Interesting, he's taken the damage. Doesn't want to trade a Brothers of Fire. There we see a spitting slug. Even more pressure from Skoda here. And again, no second white for Kundert. We saw that in game two. We're seeing this in game number three. This is very unfortunate for Kundert. A double attack here. Is he now going to double block or just take four damage? I mean, this is a really difficult decision. I guess it looks like he's blocking and then dealing one damage with the Brothers of Fire. That way, trading a Brothers of Fire for a Lurker, which is actually a pretty good deal. There we see a Wormwood Tree Folk turn five. Ay, ay, ay. This is really tough for Kundert. Finding a second white, though. Ooh, I was hoping for a Preacher here, actually, but couldn't find it. Another Brothers of Fire. Brothers of Fire number three. Brothers of Fire being a great card, but just not ideal. And you can see here what Kundert basically wants to do. He wants to wait until next turn and then maybe block a Brothers of Fire with the Wormwood Tree Folk, activate the other Brothers twice, and then make that trade. But, oh, there's another Brothers of Fire. Brutal! I think this is going to be a very short game. He needs, like, an Inferno or something. Maybe this Preacher is going to buy him some time next turn. What is he going to do? How is he going to block? That's going to be so relevant. He's on 9 life and he's facing 11 damage. Oh, I'm sorry, he's facing 10 damage actually. 2 Wormwood Tree Folk is 8. And a Spitting Slug. So he's taking 6 damage. Going to go to 3. There we see a People of the Woods. And even more creatures, a lurker hitting the board. I think I think this is this is game over here for Kundert. If he's gonna use the preacher, Skoda is gonna give him the people of the woods. Which is basically a dead creature for Kundert, and then next turn he's dead. Oh man, he's just passing turn. This is so bad. And there we go again. Yeah, there he's using his preacher, like predicted, he's giving people of the woods away. We saw that in game one as well from Skoda, which is pretty cool, yeah. That kind of that 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 trick from Skoda. And there he goes with the whole cavalry. I think he's dead. This is it. This is game. Or is it? He's got one card in hand, though. Festival? No. Oh, Fisher. Okay, he's going to kill one of the creatures. He doesn't have enough, though. It's not going to help him. It's not going to save him. Yeah, that's it. Showing his cards in hand. Nothing there. Wow. Skoda, man. I mean, you really got this. Your deck operated on, on full power in that game number two and game number three but that game one what an interesting game that was and that was so close and after that it was kind of it feels like a walkover but it wasn't a walkover i think if kundert would have had a little bit of more luck or let's say not be unlucky not finding that second white and kind of stumbling on on mana basically for two games right uh if if that wouldn't have happened Maybe he could have gotten uh, the win here in this in this matchup. But uh, hey, all credits here go to Skoda. Skoda, your deck is looking mighty powerful. You're going to continue to the semifinals. Now, if you would like to see that semifinals, uh, make sure to check in again next week because then we are going to continue with this the dark tournament and we're going to go all the way to the finals. And like I said before, if you've missed the match, check the description below. There you will find the link to the playlist. And uh, there you can find all the other matches. You can also see the matches that I played in my group stages. And they were pretty cool, if I say so myself, as well. In general, it's just been a very interesting format. Now, this was the video of the Tuesday. Now, if you want to support the channel, you can do that. Well, you're already doing that by watching this video. But you can always leave a like, leave a comment. All that helps. Sharing this video on your socials. That really helps the channel move forward. And, of course, subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet. Another thing you can do is you can sponsor the show by becoming a patron on Patreon. And it already starts with $1. And one of the cool perks of becoming a patron is that you can join in in these tournaments i mean i'm not um organizing tournaments every month but every other month or so i try to organize a little something to thank my patrons for their support and if you'd like to be part of that you can become a patron too so if that interests you take a moment to take a look at our patreon page the link is probably popping up right now in an info card Click that info card and that will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. Talking about the Patreon page, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at all the fantastic, amazing patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Here we go. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?
Kikitus Fikitus Sumba Kazi.